I'm Thomas Baldrick with Oncology TV coverage of ASCO 2015. Happy to have with us Dr. Ruben Mesa. He is from the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you, Tom. So today you've got the new results of the Persist One Phase Three study. What results have you had to share today? So the Persist One study was uh, the JAK2 inhibitor procritinib, randomized two to one against best alternative therapy in patients with intermediate and high-risk myelofibrosis. Uh, in particular, they could have any platelet count at trial entry, which would be a bit of a unique uh, feature uh, in that uh, most trials have limited trials for myelofibrosis for those above a platelet count of 50,000. The results showed very significant improvement in uh, splenomegaly by splenic reduction, uh, improvement in symptoms, but in particular in those individuals with low platelets showed uh, very significant differences against best alternative therapy in splenomegaly in symptoms, as well as the ability to improve low platelets in about a third of the patients actually saw their platelets not only drop, they actually rose. Uh, we also observed that 25% of patients who entered red cell transfusion dependent became transfusion independent. So it was a combination of seeing improvement in splenomegaly and symptoms, but some activity and benefit in individuals with cytopenias or at least maintaining their cytopenias without a worsening. So this is brand new information. What to you is the most exciting aspect of it? Well, I think it potentially identifies really an incremental therapy that uh, will be particularly impactful for patients with very advanced disease who have lower counts. Uh, it may open the window as well to combination therapies uh, with procritinib not causing thrombocytopenia, and that many of the agents we would consider combining uh, for myelofibrosis, hypomethylating therapies, IMIDs, others, have thrombocytopenia as part of their toxicity profile, so it may be a, a good fit in terms of combinations. Now the FDA granted picritinib fast track designation. Um, how do you see the oral version of this fitting in to the paradigm with how you treat um, MF and PV and so forth? Well, I think that it uh, clearly makes a strong case for frontline therapy for patients with severe thrombocytopenia. There's a parallel study that is ongoing at the moment called the PERSIST-2 study, looking at procuritinib as a second-line therapy uh, uh, by individuals that have failed either ruxolitinib and or multiple JAK inhibitors. So I think the, the full panel of, you know, in whom should we be considering procuritinib will continue to evolve, but I think the data that we present here clearly makes a very strong case for individuals with significant thrombocytopenia uh, and probably makes a case for consideration for those with significant anemia. Okay, we, you mentioned Persist2. What is the design of that and when might results be available of that? So that's an ongoing phase three study, two different dosing uh, strata for the procritinib, one at 400 a day, one at 200 twice a day versus best alternative therapy. It's exclusively for patients with a plate account of less than 100,000 uh, and it's randomizing between procritinib and best alternative therapy. I'm involved with that, but that study is being led by Serge Verstavchek uh, and that's uh, ongoing with hopefully to have results uh, potentially by next year. Well, you two work well together. I'm sure you'll get it done. <laughs> uh, I, we, 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 we will find a way to get it done, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your conference. Alrighty, thank you, Tom.